Now, about two Fianna Fáil controversies ago, there was a bit of kerfuffle about the fact that Science Minister Conor Lenehan was due to launch a book which questions evolution. So what does this book actually say? The book is called The Origin of Species Nonsense, and in the studio is its author, John J. May. Good afternoon, John. Hi, good afternoon, How John. How are you today? I'm tired uh, How from are you all the... with your celebrity? Well, I, I, celebrity, I'm, I, I'm dealing with all the offensive texts and emails that I'm getting from around the world, but poor Conor Lenehan is getting far more. Is it's disgraceful. Well, he's a politician. Well, that's right. They have thick skins. I, I yeah. know. But on the other hand, there's what I have to put up with. Uh, anti-science ha- author begs Lenin to skip lunch. Anti-science author? Yeah. Let me tell you something on air on News Talk. My book, Respect Science, is based on science. And uh, to call me an anti-science author, I rang them today, and they haven't rang back, to see have they read my book. How can they say... How can Fiac Kelly and Shane Hickey in the Irish Independent in today's newspaper say my book is anti-science? Mm. The entire premise is based on science. Right, OK. I've, well, we'll, we'll get to that because this okay. is complicated stuff and, we, and we'll try and go through it logically what your, what your arguments are, OK? And now, what I'm, I'm going to try and base this on is that there are seven points that John put on his website. Uh, now, the first point he says is that uh, evolution teaches us to be satisfied with not understanding origins. What do you mean by that? Correct. First of all, if you ask an evolutionist, uh, where did we come from? They always start off with millions of years ago. But let me tell you something, Sean. If you try to remember something that happened in your life 40 years ago or 30 years ago, you'd have difficulty. Mm-hmm. So when someone tries to tell you what happened 40 million years ago, they're guessing. Mm-hmm. And when you read Charles Darwin's book, The Origin of Species, which I've read forensically, I've counted 1,515 suppositions. And he never addresses origins, which one scientist texted me today and says, we're aware of that. Mm. I, 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 you've lost me completely now. I, I still don't know what you mean. I still don't know what you mean. It teaches us to be satisfied with, with not, understanding not understanding origins. origins. Yeah. It's, it's obvious. To be you, satisfied with not understanding. Not understanding. But I saw, There's I saw, no evolutionist understands his origins, and that's why they have to waffle. Right. Okay, so I, I, I understood that, that uh, evolution means that, that, that there was a process of natural selection went on over millions of years, that animals evolved out of other animals, that there was uh, ge- gen- what would seem to be genetic quirks, but turned out to be advantages in, in certain sets of circumstances, well, and that's how beings evolved. Well, that's the theory. That's mm. the theory. That uh, Charles Darwin himself never used the word evolution in his first edition. Mm. Uh, Uh, And that's the theory. But the reality is the definition of theory is a set of assumptions. And the director of the uh, Human Genome Project uh, was talking about origins. And he uh, presided over the uh, unraveling and the the decoding of the human genome. It took 12 years and nearly 10,000 scientists. Mm. He believes that the true origins of man is through a creator, a first cause, a great scientist. Now, I'm not getting into the theology of religion, but a great scientist. Evolutionists talk about millions and billions of years ago. Yeah. And that's why it teaches you to be satisfied with not understanding origins. Are those two, two things mutually exclusive? Could, could the great scientist not have caused evolution to happen? No, no, because uh, first of all, it would be evidence of it. And as the greatest scientist and evolutionist of the 20th century, Stephen Jay Gould himself said, the trade secret of uh, all paleontologists, those who study fossils, is there isn't enough in all the museums of the world to fill a coffin. And that's a fact. Mm. Because every time you go to a fossil, Sean, it's always fully formed. It's always fully formed. Why is that? Because I, that's I, I, the only way they've ever been found in the in the rock structures. Mm. Always fully formed. And the argument that, that, well, there was an intermediate, there's no evidence. Right. None whatsoever. No evidence whatsoever. Whatsoever. So you think you think Darwin just made it up? I think he was a tormented religious person, and I think he was a brilliant uh, naturalist. Uh, he enjoyed shooting birds, which disgusted me. Uh, but he was a nice person. He, right. Yeah, he was a nice he person. He was a bird shooting. He, yeah, apart from that, yeah. He was a bird shooting, yeah, maybe. <laughs> is what you're saying. I, but it, it, okay, but it, evolution, and, me, uh, and many people uh, who, who would believe in evolution would be fairly happy with that's an explanation. It's, it, it's not baffling to them. It kind of make, it makes logical sense. Now, as you say, it's a theory... Uh, there are many theories, and, and that's the thing about a theory, because we, to prove it, you'd have to travel back in time, which is obviously impossible mm-hmm. to do that. So any theory about how humans or life evolved is, is going to remain, or appeared, is going to be a theory anyway. Well, I don't deal in theories. If you read, right. Richard Dawkins says, if you read my book, 
he says, uh, the, the greatest show on earth. Mm. And I'm, I'm reading it forensically. In fact, page, page eight tells us we're cousins of, uh, pomegranates and porcupines, and page 16 tells us we're distant cousins of bananas and turnips. Mm. Now, if that's accepted as science by some scientists, that's pathetic. Because mm. the reality is it's not science. It's ridiculous. Just because there are mo- some tiny molecular similarities on a biochemical level between something in our bone structure or our flesh uh, that's in a banana, that that's our ancestor. We're cousins. Well, I mean, make any uh, sense. that could be literary hyperbole he's indulging in there to make, to make that particular course, point. But, so. but just on Charles Darwin, uh, uh, he, ne- he, he uh, said in his, in his first edition, which he took out of every other edition, and this is the heart of evolution, that he couldn't see any reason why the American bear could not have become from the whale. He got so much laughter by his fellow scientists that he never put it into the following six editions. Mm. But they, 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 it's, it's just ridiculous. Mm. When well, you I mean, actually uh, stop well, well, to think about it. At the time, it was a revolutionary notion, but obviously uh, so much scientific thinking has come on board to accept it. Correct. And the president of the genome, uh, 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 the guy I mentioned to you, Francis Collins, he doesn't he, he doesn't believe in uh, that uh, there's no creator, there's no first cause. Well, sure, the, the two things aren't mutually exclusive, I, I would have thought. Well, they are. I mean, it's a contradiction to be... Uh, to so believe. are you saying if, if you can't believe in evolution and believe in a god? Well, I know a scientist who does. He's in the uh, university in Cork, and he's a very nice guy. I can't bring his name to mind, and I've listened to one of his lectures and he's listened to one of mine but it is a contradiction because and, and I won't get into religion because I think religion is a pox in the human family the organized religion mm. but if he's a Christian and he is yeah. and if he believes in his founder the Jewish rabbi Jesus who said he did not heard who, that he who created them in the beginning made them male and female because you need a perfect penis and a perfect vagina a perfect sperm and a perfect egg to create a perfect baby that's a perfect baby on the front, uh, a future baby on the front of my. Well, it's a radio show, so we can't. We, we, no, we can't, see, course, we, yeah. we can't see that. We can't see that right now. Um, it promotes the second point is it promotes the dangerous nonsense of no first cause, no supreme scientist, and just order from, came from disorder. Correct. Uh, th- th- so that would mean you're not just rejecting the theory of evolution; you'd be re- rejecting relativity, you'd be rejecting most of modern physics. No, that's that's a separate issue. Sticking well, I mean, most of modern physics doesn't regard time as linear. It doesn't. There's not a Correct. start and beginning. It's looped. It's 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 yes, multidimensional. Yes. It's very complicated. Qu- com- qu- quantum mechanics is very complicated, and so as what you're discussing is very complicated. But let's keep it simple. The reality is that the question is why are we here? Not the mechanics of of, uh, the, uh, of the, the 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 problems that with um, quantum mechanics, etc. So where does it end? Mm. Why are we here? The guys who why does there have to be a why? Well, you said about the first, it's a first cause. You said about the first cause. Yeah, well, you're saying there is a first cause. Uh, not everybody accepts there's a first every, cause. Every, every science student in the world, the first year in their science class, the first lesson they learn, cause and effect. Mm. There's a cause why you are sitting there today, why that cup is there, why that book is there. Mm. Cause and effect. Every evolutionist who denies there's a creator denies a first cause. And they throw in a smoke screen by saying, well, who made the, who made the first cause? Mm. Bullshit. Answer the first question. How do you answer there is no first cause if you're an evolutionist? Right. If you're an well, evolutionist. Let's, uh, and, and you're right. Uh, most modern physicists, because uh, w- uh, what they say caused the Big Bang is a thing called the singularity, which under the laws of physics is impossible. Correct. Well, um, Albert Einstein didn't believe in the Big Bang. Um, and, uh, well, yeah. Uh, the, the thing is, though, because they don't know what caused the Big Bang doesn't mean God caused the Big Bang. Well, there may not have been a Big Bang. There was something. We or, don't know. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. They, they see, when, when you, we're here sitting here in the radio studio and we're talking about it and it's interesting. But when, you, when a man is dying or a woman is dying in their deathbeds, these are not the things they think about. They think about life and why we're here and why we have to die and is there a life again and how did we get here? Why are there 15 amazing constants that regulate the universe in such brilliant mathematical precision? Hmm. Is that a proof of God? It's a proof of order. And when you, uh, as I dem- demonstrate in my lecture tomorrow night, chance and uh, disorder cannot produce order. I demonstrate that in my lecture. And if, you want to, if people want to believe that, that's okay, because there's three things influences in our lives. Bias, belief, and background. And we're all, we're all influenced by those sure. three things. Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the thing is, though, I, I, I actually don't know, because your, your argument seems to be more skewing into, into the world of physics rather than evolution. Evolution doesn't really contradict what, what, what you seem to be saying at all well, about it does. the first causes I, it, of the universe. Sean, it does. In simple language, mm. I believe there's a creator, yes. right? And I believe he put man on this planet 
uh, around 6,000 years ago, but I detest what the, uh, the Christians say, that the Earth is only 6,000 years old, blah, blah. I, I distance myself from that idea. Right. So you believe so, in carbon dating, you know, things... Well, carbon dating is, is, is... There's different views on carbon dating. Right. It, it seems to be... Uh, carbon-14 is a, is a different different thing. But the, it seems to me that the, the universe was created for a purpose and man was put here for a purpose. And if you go back in human history, in my book, uh, name the tribes before the, uh, uh, the, before the Babylonians. Mm. Very few. Mm. There were there were Semites, so very few Sumerians, but very few. And so people can say what they like. But six thousand years ago on this planet, there were no human beings. There were no. And is there scientific evidence of that? Of course, it's in all. It's all in my book. Yeah. But you know, you know, do you know what all the all the rotten and vile emails? Is this based on the Bible? No. No, because that's hardly no. a reliable no, he, historical no, no, transcript. No, I mean, the Bible's a dangerous book. Yeah. No, but some of the stuff in it is true. If a liar tells you the truth, it's still the truth. But it's based on science and history. Mm. If you go 3,000 years ago, Dublin City did not exist. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. Dublin City, as we understand it, did yeah. not exist. And so my book takes you back in human history mm. to when there were no cities, no villages on this planet 6,000 years ago. And I do it one generation at a time. And I use history... And I use a number of other disciplines to prove that man is only on this earth. 